Hi there, I'm John Pushkar, President of Prussian Technical Services. And I'm usually here talking about technical things, talking about keeping you safe in the world of fuels and combustion systems. But today's episode's a little bit different because today I want to talk about the circumstances where, quite frankly, no one's going to get what they expected, where the outcome's going to possibly be disastrous. I've spent the better part of 40 years traveling over 3 million miles in and out of over 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. I've seen many well-intentioned projects go bad. I've testified, been depoted for many court cases where, quite frankly, things just repeated themselves. So today I want to give you insights into my big three that I see have made for the most painful, egregious, horrible projects, horrible working situations where things just were never going to get fixed. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. Today, I want to talk about some intangible red flags that I've learned to recognize on projects throughout my career. It's been hard learning. These are things that come from the school of hard knocks. These are things that have come from very special experiences that I've had. I've recognized that engineering project success depends on far more things than just how proficient you are as an engineer. I'm gonna give you today some concepts to think about the next time you sit down at a meeting and someone starts to plan a project. My goal here today is to enhance your chances for success. Success in my world means saving lives, keeping people safe. Success in your world may mean something different. The principles that I'm here to discuss with you today are generally applicable to any type of engineering project environment. I've broken down my engineering project red flags into three distinct categories. These are people issues, these are project scoping issues, and these are sustainability issues. And I don't mean ecologically, but I mean planning for the long-term success and deliverability of the functionality of your project. So let's take the people issue first. If you're in an environment where everybody seems to hate each other and not get along, that's a red flag. It could be that management doesn't like labor, labor doesn't like management, or even people within the same group or company don't like each other. All of these will make your success less likely. And let's think about how that's gonna impact you. So first of all, an important success factor in any project is communicating. If people don't like each other, they're not gonna to wanna to communicate. People aren't gonna to want to recognize and communicate about information that you need from them, and people are going to withhold information. Let's face it, people issues inhibit communications. What do you really need for a successful project? Everybody to communicate and communicate well. Quite often in my career, it's meant being able to communicate very effectively with hourly people and skilled tradespeople. And what I've often found is that these people just have been looking for a little bit of respect. Many of these people are far more intelligent than anybody I've ever gone to engineering school with. They could have been PhDs somewhere, but the life circumstances that existed for them meant they didn't have the luxury of going to college. Many of these people have their ideas dismissed. Many of these people have wonderful solutions for these problems if you would just sit down and ask and listen. 
Many of these people identify issues as your project's being implemented. And again, if you listen and show them respect, they'll share this information with you. Sometimes just bringing over coffee at a break and spending some time with these folks goes a long way. They're probably not used to being respected and being listened to. If you show them that you're different, especially early on in your career, it'll be a major success factor for you as time goes on. The other people issue that I've encountered over and over and over again that you need to pay attention to is you need to work on making others look like a genius. You need to make people understand that you'll never embarrass them. You need to let people know not only what you know, but what you don't know. Once management, once customers know that they can trust you in these ways, once they know that you have no ego and that if the project's successful, you won't try to take all the credit, you're always willing to share and include everybody into the marvelous success that's been created, you'll find that everyone wants to work with you. Everybody wants you to be part of the team and it'll be a major factor in your success. So another big red flag is not enough time spent scoping a project. And let's face it, what's another word for scoping? It's expectations. It's setting budgets and schedules and understanding the actual realities of a project. What does this take? It takes engineering work. When I worked at Standard Oil of Ohio back in the beginning of my career, we had formal requests for funding to do certain percents of engineering on a project. Because quite frankly, what does it take to understand and set expectations? Sometimes it takes doing 90% of the engineering work, which frankly could be quite costly and take a considerable amount of time. But to set expectations without doing this groundwork first is really misleading people and asking for trouble. If you find yourself in an environment where no one's willing to do this kind of upfront work and there are expectations being created about schedules and budget, this then is a big red flag. These are the kinds of projects that you need to get away from. These are the kinds of projects that you need to not take if a customer isn't willing to pay for some upfront work to properly scope a project. The thing that's really scary about not properly scoping a project is that at some point when someone understands that the schedule isn't going to be met or the budget isn't going to be met, the preferred method to solve that is typically to cut something out. So then is going to come the pressure on you as part of the engineering team to remove things. And in my world, that gets people hurt and sometimes killed. It's something that I just can't do and I'd rather not be a part of. It's very rare that a senior level person is going to want to stand up and say, you know what, I screwed up. We didn't do enough upfront scoping. We didn't do enough upfront engineering. We didn't really understand all that was required here. I'm taking the blame. We're going to stop. Um, need another million dollars to make this right. The next time I see that happen, it'll be the first time I see that happen. And finally, the last red flag I want to talk about is if you're on a project team and no one is talking about anything but the immediate finish line. If you look into this and you see that there's not a plan for preventive maintenance, there's not a plan for procedures, for training of staff, there's not a plan for evaluating performance of the functionality you promised a year later, three years later, that's a red flag. That means a bunch of people are kind of in here for the short term. They're not looking to make sure that this is going to continue to deliver. In my world, again, for what I do, that gets people hurt and killed. The safety solutions and systems that I help implement have to keep working forever. The greatest example of a management team stepping up to make something sustainable is with the project I did with US Steel. We helped them create and implement 
an isolation, purging, and gas reintroduction program to make their facilities safer. I was actually in a boardroom with senior executives when one of them turned to me and said, that's all wonderful, John, but we now have to work on the non-technical parts of this. We have to put a reporting system in place. We have to look at staffing levels and authorizing more budget for staffing because we can't let this program fall apart a couple of years from now. That's just how we look at important safety projects. I was totally impressed and blown away. It was really good to see someone take on the intangible abstract parts, the non-technical parts, and be concerned about how to make such an important program live and deliver well into the future. If no one's talking like this with your project, if none of this exists and everybody's immediately focusing on just that finish line, again, that's a red flag. If you're in a meeting planning a project, bring up this sustainability part. Ask about if there's funding or planning for how this is gonna happen. Why do I talk about these things? Why, why should you even be concerned? Well, frankly, it's because as engineers and professionals, we're at risk for civil lawsuits, we're also at risk for personal criminal liability. In my world especially, I'm in the kind of world where uh, if I make a mistake, it's not like something's a little crooked or on a really hot sunny day, people are a little uncomfortable because the air conditioning isn't sized big enough. In my world, people get injured horribly, people get killed, entire facilities are leveled. And, and made into rubble. So in my world, I have errors and omissions insurance, which quite frankly, if I ever have to file a claim, I'll probably be done because likely they'll never want to insure me again. Could be the same for you as well. And again, today, if someone gets hurt badly or God forbid killed and you're involved, Today, there are prosecutors looking for personal criminal liability. Uh, you could be tried for manslaughter. This is just a horrible situation because you'll need an attorney for that. You might be also being sued civilly. You'll need an attorney for that. Just the legal defense could wipe you out. So again, folks, I hope that I've contributed to your body of knowledge about situations that appear to be bad, uh, what you could do about some of those. And remember, at the end of the day, the life that you save, it just might be yours. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, Things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being the legal expert if things go really wrong.